Welcome to worship on for Sunday, September 20th, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost in the year 2020. And while we're kind of just talking a little bit at the beginning of the service, if you haven't, don't you have your communion elements ready, please be sure to get them ready so we can go ahead with the words of institution and consume the elements. So, Mike, you have um, a new mask for us now? Uh, I don't have it with me or on me. You're throwing oh, okay. me through a loop here. <laughs> I was going to maybe show it next weekend. But oh, okay. Here, I won't put it on okay. my face. I'll just turn it on and see if I can show people what it says. I might have to shut the light off a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a digital mask. And... Uh, I'll try to make this work as best we can, but it has an LED scroller on it, and with my phone, I can program it to say whatever it needs to say. And hopefully this isn't backwards to the world, but it should say... <laughs> well, I, it wel says welcome. It so. says welcome yep. to worship. See, I programmed that just before the worship service. And yep. Yeah, I hope everyone could see that okay. It, on, it works out right on, on the, YouTube. On the and here. You can program it. You can change the settings. You can you can turn a microphone on, and it'll make little beats to music. It's <laughs> it's the most idiotic thing I probably ever bought, but it's also it's so fun, and it does have an insert to you know protect yourself and everything. And speaking of protection, Pastor, I'd like to uh, share a few things with the congregation this week. Um, I, last weekend I was wearing a mask at, at the service here because I was in an uncertain place at that time. I had found out Friday evening from Department of Health that I had come in close contact with someone who tested positive. And I'm not really going to go, go into details or anything about you know who, when, what, how, or whatever. Yep. Uh, what prevented me from having to be quarantined for 14 days and for uh, basically not getting sick is the fact that I social distance and my contact with this person was below 15 minutes, well, well below 15 minutes. And it was um, uh, six feet of distance for that time frame, less than 15 minutes. And I wore a mask. And because of that, here we are, we're a full week plus out. We're probably pushing nine, ten days out. No symptoms, haven't been sick, haven't shown anything. Uh, I didn't have to quarantine. I was still able to go to work. I was still able to live my life and not get my family sick or anything. And I, I just want to testify to everybody, wear your mask. It's, it's you know, When you're in public, when you're around people, it is the great defender right now. And, and I, I feel that strongly from personal experience. And, and last weekend, I was a little bit of a basket case because of <laughs> everything that was going on. And as the week went on, I was like, well, I'm, I'm not feeling sick. I don't have any symptoms. I went to work. I isolated myself from everybody out of caution. Um, but like I said, it's a great equalizer. And, and it's kind of a testament even in the schools right now. Yeah. We've had We've had the one case uh, with a student so far, okay. but more importantly, we haven't had any cases where it was an employee, you know, a teacher or staff spreading okay. it to student or student spreading it to another student or student spreading it to staff. So we haven't had any spread in the school. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at, and I'm, oh. and I'm taking that from what was said at last week's school board meeting. Uh, so I feel like I could probably officially say that that uh, the fact that we are in, in the yellow state in the schools and uh, masks are mandatory at all times, uh, I, I truly feel that it has um, taken a, that element, that spread element away. And it, and it allows us to continue to educate the kids. So right, right. we're going to continue doing what we're doing because we're having some success, whereas some schools in the state... Uh, who didn't have a mask mandate uh, are, are having difficulties, and they they've yeah. had to basically go back to online, and and so I think we're on the right track. But everybody in this congregation watching this service, wear your masks in public. You you don't know 
And you yeah. never know when you might get that phone call yeah. saying, hey, you know, Aunt Tom or Uncle Tommy or Aunt Sally or, you know, yeah. someone that you were in contact with has it, they've tested positive, and they've named you as a close contact. And so when, when I was named, that is a mandatory 14 days. Since I was able to prove to them that masks, social distance, it changed, it, it changed the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It changed the situation. Yeah. The situation became, okay, well, wait a minute. You were protecting, and we're going to go with that. But yeah. be cautious, be aware. Yeah. So. And, and I really commend the people who have been coming to worship at Our Saviors, have been wearing their masks, and they've been doing the distance. Yeah. So commend you all for doing that. You know, so if I could grab that mask and, and have it like do fireworks and stuff like that, <laughs> I would. We and were, I'm not wearing it right now, but we are we are so socially yep. distanced from each other by, by yeah. the distance of the sanctuary that it helps. I know no Earl said around. ten feet, but we're much further than that yeah. even. Is that and, twenty? And <laughs> when we are close yeah. to each other, the pastor and I do mask up. Yep. Just want everyone to know that we're yeah. behind the scenes info right. there. And I've wasted enough of the time today with service. <laughs> okay. I don't have any other announcements. I don't have any pictures. I look okay. a little grubby. I've been mowing lawns today and putting away a lot of furniture. And then I looked at the clock and went, ah, I got to get to the <laughs> sanctuary. So yeah. well. get used to me being in a t-shirt. This is what I look like. <laughs> On non-church days, okay. Well, you know we don't have a dress code. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, welcome, Pastor, and, and uh, it's all yours. Okay, to get us into our worship for today and our caring conversation questions, think about or tell a story of how someone was kind to you. Has it ever, another one, has it ever been difficult for you to be kind to someone? What is it that made it difficult? And then a question about God's kindness. Is God's kindness to you a surprise? And I'll be talking more about that in my sermon and all our gospel reading it enters into that for us. So we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gifts of salvation to ourselves. Help us to be humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And then the good news. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit. Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. And now our opening hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness, and we will be hearing the instrumental version.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us this day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gail Cranston is going to be reading our readings and our psalm for, the, for today. An introduction to the first reading, which is found in Jonah chapter 3. After Jonah's short sermon in 3-4, the Ninevites all repented, and God decided to spare the city. Jonah objected to this and became even more angry when God ordered a worm to destroy a plant that was providing shade. The book ends with a question that challenges any who are not ready to forgive you. You, Jonah, are all worked up about a bush, but shouldn't I be concerned about 120,000 Ninevites? The scripture begins. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what, be, what would become of the city. The Lord appointed a bush and made it come over to Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose and God prepared and asked that he might die, he said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is found in number 145, verses 1 through 8. The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall tell of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. 
They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The introduction to the second reading is found in Philippians 1, 21, 30. Paul writes to the Philippians from prison. Though he is uncertain about the outcome of his imprisonment, he is committed to the ministry of the gospel and calls on the Philippians to live lives that reflect and enhance the gospel mission. For me, Living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for today is a reading from the 20th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew where we have Jesus telling a parable about God's generosity, challenging the common assumption that God rewards people according to what they have earned or deserved. St. Matthew writes Jesus' words to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go to the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock... He went out, and he found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this the same as I give to you. 
Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we get to hear it from the children's Bible for the children to to look at and to think about a little bit, too. That's quite an interesting story, isn't it? And you know, Jesus' stories are always full of surprises. But anyhow, from our World Bible book, it's the parable of the vineyard. The early morning sun was shining in the vineyard full of plump, juicy grapes. The vineyard owner saw that the grapes were ripe and ready to be picked. So early in the morning, he hired hardworking men to pick the grapes. The workers picked and picked, but still there were so many grapes. And it asks, what color of grapes do you like? And see, they were all purple then. I think, you know, we have a lot of different colors, or we have some different colors anyway, don't we? At 12 o'clock, the vineyard owner hired more workers. They picked and picked, but there were still more grapes. At 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock, the vineyard owner hired even more workers. They picked and they picked and they picked. Finally, there were no more grapes. And we've got our our little girl saying, I wonder why it's called a vineyard instead of a grape patch, huh? You know, we talk about strawberry patches and all that kind of stuff, huh? Yeah. Well, the sun set. It was time to pay the workers. The vineyard owner paid the workers who started at 5 o'clock first, and he paid the workers who started at the earliest last. Every worker got the same amount. The early morning workers were grumbling. What? We worked all day. We picked the most grapes. No fair. Why are the afternoon workers paid the same? Well, the vineyard owner had an answer. I paid you what I promised to pay you. Can't I give away what is mine the way I want to give it away? And so it says, Jesus wanted to teach people about God's kingdom. Like the vineyard owner who surprised everyone by giving the last the same as the first, Jesus said, God is more generous than anyone can ever imagine. And so we've got Otto saying, the last workers hired were paid first. I'd want to start working at 5 o'clock. So we start at the towards the end, huh? Well, that's not surprising, Otto. Jesus told lots of stories about God's kingdom having unexpected surprises, and for sure they were. And so you got a sweating guy here, and you got some people angry and some people really happy in our story today, huh? And so it is with, we're told, the way God works with us. And so that I know is a hard thing for us to think about when we get older too, isn't it? Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Depth perception. It's the ability to see beyond the surface, isn't it? In our story, it all begins with the owner of the vineyard and the grapes are ready to be harvested. In Jesus' day, And still, in some parts of our world today, farmers and vineyard owners would hire workers when the day of the harvest comes. The work day was usually from 6 to 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. This farmer found workers at 6 a.m. 
they agreed to work for a denarius. Now that's about $120 in our money. The standard pay, that was the standard pay for a day of work at that time. And so the guys went out to work. Soon the vineyard owner realized that he needed more workers to bring in the harvest. So he went out at 9 a.m., then at noon and at 3 p.m., promising all of them that they would be paid what is fair. But the vineyard owner at 5 o'clock still realized he needed more. So he got those people and gave them a fair, he said he would tell them he would give a fair wage. Quitting time rolls around. Time to settle accounts. This is where the story may seem quite ridiculous to us. The owner begins with the ones he hired last at 5 p.m. They worked only an hour in the vineyard. Imagine their joy at receiving that denarius, that $120. Obviously, they didn't keep it quiet, right? And so they showed it off. The other workers now, they worked a lot longer, and so you can imagine they were calculating in their minds, aha, I should get $480, I should get $840. And the ones that began at 6 a.m., $1,220. And I'm suspecting if they would have had a cell phone, they would have gotten on eBay and they would have bought something really nice for the house. But this is where our story seems to not kind of go with what we would like to think. No matter how long they had worked, they received the same wage, $120 the same as those who worked for only an hour. They became very indignant at what they received. They felt that they had been unfairly treated. And they told this to the vineyard owner. And as it's said in the children's sermon, we know Jesus' parables have those unexpected surprise endings. The landowner seems ready he knows how to respond. He said, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the same usual daily wage? In the original language, the vineyard owner is basically saying, back off. You got just what we agreed on, the usual day's wage, and that's what I gave you. We know the owner was right. He'd not been unfair. The real issue here is deeper than the issue of fairness. It leads to depth perception. And the vineyard owner puts it this way. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? In the original language, the phrase, are you envious because I am generous, reads, is your eye evil because I am good? At the time of Jesus, that evil eye referred to a person who constantly focused on what they did not have and suffered from an envious heart as a result. It seems that those disgruntled workers were cranky because the vineyard owner had been particularly generous with the others, but had been merely given them what they had been promised. Life isn't fair. How many times have we told that to our children, right? And how many times did we hear it when we were kids? But life isn't fair. But if you know the truth, our God is not fair either. And for that, we need to be very grateful. If God played fair, if God gave us what we deserve, we'd be in big trouble. Instead, we know Jesus did what we, he paid for what we deserve. He went to the cross so that all of us might receive through faith what we do not deserve, God's grace. God's grace is all the good stuff. 
God's presence through mercy, forgiveness, love, salvation, life. Life with all its ups and downs. The heart of the parable today, the heart of our whole Bible, is God's outrageous grace and generosity. We worship the one God who offers abundant eternal life, not to people who deserve it, but to people just like us. And maybe that's the problem. We think we deserve it, right? After all, we're entitled, huh? Many of us identify with the 6 a.m. workers instead of the 5 p.m. workers. The reality, we are all the ones who come to work at 5 p.m., and we will more likely enjoy life so much more if we will choose to see ourselves that way. We are all people who can open the envelope at the end of every day and laugh out loud at the sheer generosity of our one God who has called us to work in the vineyard of the world to give us so much more than we deserve. If we see ourselves as coming at 5 p.m. and God with God's overwhelming generosity, we live with more joy and more generosity ourselves. There's a parable that is told by an old rabbi about a farmer who had two sons. As soon as they were old enough to walk, the old farmer took them to the fields and he taught them everything that he knew about growing crops and raising animals. When he was too old to work, the two sons took over the chores of the farm and when the father died, they found that they enjoyed working with each other. And it was so meaningful that they decided to keep their partnership going. So, as each brother contributed what he could during the every harvest season, they would divide it equally between themselves. <clears throat> Years later, <clears throat> the older brother remained single. The younger brother married and had eight children. A little bit later, when they were having bountiful harvests, the old bachelor thought to himself, my brother has ten mouths to feed. I only have one. He really needs more of his harvest than I do. But I know he is much too fair to want to take it. I know what I'll do. In the dead of night when he is asleep, I'm going to take some of what I have in my barn and slip it over into his barn to help him feed his family. At about the very same time he was thinking about that, the younger brother was thinking to himself, God, you have given me this wonderful family, and my brother has not been as fortunate. He really needs more of the harvest for his old age than I do. But I know him. He's much too fair. He will never take it. I know what I'm going to do. In the dead of night, when he is asleep, I will take some of what I have, put it in my barn, and slip it over into his barn. And so one night, when the moon was full, you guessed it, those two brothers came face to face, each on a mission of generosity. The old rabbi said that there was not a cloud in the sky that night, but a gentle rain began to fall. God wept for joy because two of God's children had actually gotten the point. Two of God's children had come to realize that generosity is the deepest char characteristic of the holy. And because we are made in God's image, our being generous is the secret to our joy as well. Yes, life is not fair. God is not fair. 
thank God. We are stewards of God's grace, God's goodness. And this gives us better vision, gives us good depth perception that sees far beyond the surface. Life is not fair because it is rooted in God's grace where God showers us with all the good stuff. Amen. And now we will be hearing music for our next hymn, which is Just As I Am Without One Plea. you to join me as we confess our faith in our one God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, I have one announcement to also add. Um, Judy Beck died, uh, yes, um, died on Friday, and her funeral is going to be next Friday, so um, there's going to be more in the paper about that. I believe it's at 1 p.m. Friday, but um, it's going to be an hour before the service where they will be inviting friends to come and be with them. It's supposed to be a family service only at the funeral home. With that, we realize we are drawn together in the compassion of God. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Generous God, you make the last first the first last. 
where this gospel challenges the church, equip your church for its works of service. Strengthen all who suffer for Christ's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sun, wind, bushes, worms, cattle, great cities, nothing in creation is outside your concern, mighty God. In your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Where we find envy and enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict and violence. Lord, we know we have more than enough of it in this country of ours that we so love. Please help us to break down those barriers. Inspire our leaders to be creative and wise. Bless the work of negotiators, peacemakers, and developmental workers, that they may be able to come up with good ways to help us realize the new and positive ways for us to work together for the good of all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, reveal yourself to all who are in need, those in especially need of gracious and merciful actions. You are slow to anger. You are abounding in steadfast love. You are ready to relent from punishing us. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and livelihoods to all who are seeking work. And we know because of COVID-19, there are a lot of people who are lacking that. We pray for our governmental leaders to come up with adequate ways to help those who are in so need of the funds to just keep on living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who are in any need. Lord, we pray your healing hand to continue to rest upon Norma. We pray that you be with Ron Garrels as he will soon be undergoing back surgery. We thank you that Pastor Zachariah is out of the hospital, but we pray your continued healing hand on him. Please continue to walk with Deb, Donna, Judy, Jerry, Betsy, Randy, Patricia, Dorothy, Mildred, Judy, Florence, Dan, Lila, Jordan, Marianne, Dee, Aurora, Dwayne, Mackenzie, and all we now name silently in your hearts. Please, Lord, may your healing hand continue to rest upon them and be with those who care for them and the medical teams working with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we lift up the family of Judy Beck as they grieve her death. We pray that you be with them. We thank you for who she has been for them, and we pray your guiding presence rest with all of us as we help lead and guide to be comfort to those in grief. We praise you for the generations that have declared your power to us. Give us faithfulness to follow them, living for Christ until your call to join us, you call us to join them in joyful song around your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and anything else that you see that we need, we pray that you grant us, O oh Lord, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those in your homes at this time. And now I invite you to have your communion elements 
ready and we and I will be sharing with you the words of institution. We remember that night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Take your bread, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Then in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, In this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Take your fruit of the vine, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith and to life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. And now our announcements for the week. We're still planning to have live worship. We had council last Wednesday night, and so far the counts are staying stable, as Mike said, in, uh, yeah, in Huron. Well, community-wise, we've gone up a little bit this past week. Like, Yesterday, okay. I think there were 12 new cases in, yeah. in Beetle I, County. Yeah, I know in the state, they're really jumping high. Yeah, there were 389 yeah. statewide yesterday. And, and what's more concerning is the death rate over the last week has actually gone up significantly. Yeah. Not in, not in our area, but statewide. Yep, so right. It's, yeah. it's a concern. It's the time we live in, and yep. we just have to adapt and keep plugging forward. I mean, what other choice do we have? Really? Yeah, yeah, right, right. And and wearing a mask is a lot cheaper than having to go and even get tested. So Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I don't know if you know this, but during your uh, prayers, I brought you a glass of water. You sounded like you had a frog in your throat. So that's up there. Don't spill it. It's on the pulpit. Oh. Yeah, I brought you some water. You didn't even see me. That's how quick I am. Oh, you got, oh thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will try to let it sit. <laughs> Well, okay. that's, that, that no. was for you because you, you sounded a little raspy today. Are you well, doing okay? Yeah, I, it was like, and that happened a few weeks ago too. It's just uh, my throat gets dry. Don't you? And of course you can't predict it either. <laughs> no, and there's nothing worse when you're trying to talk and you're the only one talking. So. <laughs> yeah, and the allergies are starting to pick up a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, so I got to take that medication or cause more dryness too. So, yep. Thanks. Right, right there with you, Pastor. And uh, before before we move on, I, I do want to send a thank you out to anyone that is running the projection system yeah. during the live services. I think uh, yeah. Jim Tharp and uh, um, Gordon Gordon Foss. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. So yep. thank thank you guys. Yeah, I, and we've for, got for doing that. we've got about three others that are interested, and so I'm hoping that that if any of you out there are interested when you come back, decide to come back and you can sit back in the, 
in the room there and just push buttons just to put it up on the screen and stuff. And and if, yeah. you, if you're by yourself, you have to do the microphone too, I well, guess. And, but and I, I haven't done it yet, but we're getting to the point where this system we have is starting to get obsolete and we may have to update it. And it's yeah. going to be a whole new ball game of learning. So don't get discouraged. And so <laughs> Gordon and uh, Mr. Tharp and Terry yeah. Zell, don't run away. It's yeah. just, we're, yeah, on a, so we're on a Windows 7 system. And at some point, we're going to have to update it. It's just a given. Okay. So. Well, uh, just let us know. And we'll, we'll <laughs> I am not doing it until we get beyond where we are now. It, okay. Now is not the time to bring in something new. So. Okay. Sounds sounds positive. <laughs> we'll just hope that we can do at least what we're doing now. Um, we'll continue with the Bible study, and my two confirmation students have been doing great by coming, and so we'll continue with that. Um, I am not knowing anything. El oh, and I apologize. I forgot to pray for the Joshua Sh Sheil family and the Schnatthorst family and our... our uh, fellows that are in the active duty. So, so we do remember those too. And we'll try to, I'll try to remember to do it on Sunday so they at least get remembered once this weekend. So I apologize for that. Other than that, I'm trusting, I don't know of anything else. And so we're, we're our closing hymn is uh, let us, our old living bread from heaven. So we will hear the music for that and close our service then. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>